So hello and thank you very much for clicking play in this video. I'm Jose Nunes and in this tutorial, Sony Vegas tutorial, um, I'm going to show you how to how to use track motion. Okay, so I've been asked this a couple of times because I do I use track motion a lot. And uh, again, we're going to use keyframes. In most editing programs have keyframes. One and what keyframes is again is a beginning at the end of an action. Okay, so. Basically, that's what keyframes is. Okay, most programs have keyframes. Most editing programs have them. Right. So <clears throat> let's let's get move on because we've got quite a bit here to crack on here. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just use something really, really beginner style here. And I'm gonna use a solid, solid color. So I'm just gonna let's create a new video, new video track. So insert new duplicate. Uh, let's use. Okay, let's use just uh, so keep, keep it simple. And uh, if you like this tutorial and then you want to see the other one, how to make a square, a perfect square, is uh, Sony Vegas in in three dimensions. Then leave your comments and re and and replies below the video. Okay, so let's just pick up here three colors now. Okay, I actually want this one here. Let's pick a blue here for the center. This is a yellow here. Okay, so I want too much. My mouse is a bit crappy waiting for the new one here. So this one, we don't need this last one here. Let's delete that one. Okay, so. Here's how it works, okay. Uh, for, for this tutorial, because I'm going to use, I'm going to actually make this image turn like in four dimensions, okay, really, instead of three dimensions, because we're going to see the four sides of of the object, okay. Whatever we're going to put there on the screen, we're going to turn it around four dimensional instead of just three dimensional. Okay, so what we did, so we added the tracks, the video tracks, and uh, we got the solid colors here. And now what you need to, sh to do here is just change here the source to 3D alpha, all of them. So we're just going to do all of them. Okay, change this one here as well. And okay, so it's uh, sending me here. So what we've been using here as well is what's called nested, uh, nested um, track lines, okay, or well, timelines. So to do this, all you do is, is turn the other three tracks into a, a nested action okay now the next the next one here is once you did that you can see that that moves back as a child you see there make a compensating child of of the top one so because we're going to use the top one to do all to use our keyframes for this effect so you know it's pretty much just follow the video uh, you know don't don't uh, fill your brain too much <laughs> what this is what it is but, you know, mess around, your computer is not going to explode if you click on something, it goes wrong, you just start it again. Okay, so that's the only way you get better. Okay, so let's, let's keep going, because... Uh Time here. So the next step is uh, you can see here I'm using my project at 1280 by 720. So I need to divide that by two, so it'll be about 640. 
Is that my right? Yes. Okay, so let's click here on track motion and we're going to change the size, which is uh, 1080. We're going to change this blue to uh, 640. And we're going to do that in all three pieces. Okay. So that's my back piece. So I'm going to name now back piece, my center piece. And my front piece. And let's call this one, um, let's say, um, main control. You can call it whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, so very good. So this this layer, this track at the top here, you just are going to use. We'll see in a minute what I'm going to use that for. Now the next step I need to do is I I need to make this the first line here. You can see size there size this one and this one. So this one is actually didn't work because I haven't done it yet, did I? Okay, so let's change that 64 there. Okay, and we're going to change this one here as well. We just basically like that. Another 64. Okay, so what this gives me now it gives me three pieces here. So it's not good enough to make a square because they actually need to be the four sides need to be all the same. Okay, height and width. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can turn a piece around and in, in using by using track motion, motion in nested uh, nested tracks. So what we're going to do here? So <clears throat> they're pretty much there. So if I put here online here and now just using here our main control. Instead of use this one here, we're going to use this one here on the back. So once I click there, you can see what appears here. Okay, so it does not appear because I didn't change something there, which is this one here. We need to change that to 3D alpha. Okay, it's the only one which is the apparent, this is the apparent composite mode that have three, two 3D sources that you need to change. So you need to remember that in order to, to get it to work. Then click again on the, on the apparent motion there. And now if I turn this around here, okay, now we go to the keyframes, I put my mouse here and turn it around. It looks like we only go one piece there, okay. Now the reason for this is because we have to push the pieces apart from the center piece. So in this case, this, our center piece is the blue. So what I'm going to do is just going to call this track motion here on the front side. And this one, I want to just use the, the, key, the, the keyboard. You know the arrows in your mouse, and we in your mouse. Sorry, no, on the keyboard, <laughs> and we're just gonna pull it forward because this is the front one, okay. And the yellow one, which is the back one, we're gonna send it to the back. So click on that, use the top arrow, and send it to the back. Now the problem is we should use these points to count how many times I went back and how many times I went forward to break the pieces apart. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to still turn this around here, go back here to the parent motion again, turn this around and see what we get. You can see there that we got some results here, but the yellow is a bit way too, too much there. And way too much. So let's go back to this piece here and put this in, get him a bit closer. Okay. That looks about right. So I should actually go the points, but for second time I need to get cracking with this tutorial. So now if I just... Let's go animate this using the keyframes. So to animate, all you do is click reset. Reset rotation. So it goes back to the original point. And here is rotation where is the, the Y. We just want to add minus 36. And then we push this keyframe just a little to be out. Okay. Click it again. And in this case, we're just going to remove the minus from there just be a 360 and now we're gonna play and see what happens okay and there you go so there's this is how you create uh, four dimensional objects really instead of 3d so you can see you can see the four corners. Now, once you create templates like this, you can then save them and use it later. Because in this case, now if I wanna 
add more effects on different images uh, or even a picture. So if I grab a picture here very quick, for well, eight minutes already gone. Okay, let me just uh, find the picture here for you. Um, okay, let's use this one here. Let's put it there. Okay, and I can just take the yellow out here and I just replace the picture. So I can actually now save this as a template and there it goes. And I can use this later on for other projects. Okay, so there it goes. This is how you use your track motion to create uh, four dimension objects. I'm Jose Nunes. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment, rate and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to see how to do a cube exactly the same way, Please post your comments below and I will update a video how to do the how to do Gesta. Another video that we'll be uploading soon is how to use the Pro title, which comes in the Sony Vegas Pro 11. Okay guys, I'm Jose Nunes, thank you very much for watching.